thing, it's so great, but how do we actually know based on what you see? Janet, can we start with you? Sure. Well, I, of course, think that immigration is key to our prosperity, and I think it's really important in terms of driving our economic growth. I'm really excited to hear from the minister today that you're going to be um, developing more programs that are going to make it more facilitative for companies to get the best and the brightest into Canada. I think that the growth of our economy is really dependent on our ability to attract foreign investment, for us to grow our local companies, for us to be innovative and to encourage the development of new industries. And in order to do that, we need to have sufficient skilled labor. And uh, I think we've heard many times before that our universities are not graduating a significant number or a sufficient number of uh, graduates with the right skills in order to um, meet business needs across Canada. So this deficiency really needs to be addressed through immigration. And in terms of, we represent a lot of large multinational companies, and what we see with these large multinational companies is they only want to invest in countries where it's going to be very easy for them to have access to the right skilled labor, and where they're going to be able to get their people into, their key people into from abroad, into those countries. So immigration is very, very important. Just to give you an example, I was actually consulted by a large multinational company last week who's interested in starting a new venture in Canada. And they specifically asked me how easy was it going to be in order to get their key people into Canada. This project that they wanted to do in Canada, and they are looking at other countries as well, was going to provide jobs for hundreds of Canadians. And they were very interested in how easy it was going to be for them to get their people here and what Canada was doing in order to develop skill sets in, in our country and attract skill sets, particularly in the STEM industry, because that's what they worked in. And um, it was very, very interesting how immigration was really at the forefront of their decision making. And we see that all the time. Very good. Thanks, Janet. Catherine, your perspective from the workforce and the work you do in your agencies to move the immigrants into the workforce. Tell us what you see. Well, I think, you know, when you look at um, economic development, we have a lot of conversation around, you know, um, foreign direct investment. We look at the financial side, we look at the economic side. Um, my area of specialization is in human capital, and I, I can't think of economic development without having a, a very robust agenda on the human capital side, and that's, that's where we focus. And, and when you look at um, the growth in our service sector um, in, in recent times, whether it's healthcare, financial services, or any other sector, um, we contribute a major part to GDP at the moment. And when you look at um, the global impacts on our services sector, um, whether that is digitization or new technologies or any of those other areas, for our sector to continue, our sectors to continue to be competitive, um, we need um, people who have specialized knowledge, specialized talent, um, whether it's data scientists who can work with big data, um, we need people who are in the healthcare sector who can work with um, it, 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 um, manage uh, technology and medical records and so on. Um, and so the, the, the focus on immigration is about bringing to the table people who can continue to help us grow the nation, um, who can take us to a new level of competitiveness um, and to have that human capital agenda interwoven into economic development continuously. And so the role that immigration plays as well is, is, is about helping us to get the, uh, those people, once they reach here, um, to be properly integrated. Uh, and that means that, that we need people on the ground, our integration agencies, our people who are working with newcomers when they come in to provide them the necessary technical knowledge, the skills, the competencies that they need to develop to get that done expeditiously, um, get those people linked into jobs uh, very early in the process. So uh, I think it's important that when we think about the uh, integration process and how many we let in, I think we also have to think about how do we ramp up our integration agencies. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to keep into that yeah. a short minute, another question. Andy, give us some, give us some facts 
about why immigration actually is good for the economy. Tell us why. I think the best way to do that is to give you some concrete examples of people who have come in here and who are helping us today. I can't name names, but I'm going to give you some general backgrounds that might sort of fill in the gap. One person who's here today working in Toronto is a major music technical engineer type. He was recording Woodstock back in the 1970s or 80s, uh, Rolling Stones, The Beatles, uh, Kiss, uh, Jimi Hendrix, you name it, he recorded them. He's got terrific international contacts in the music industry, and he's helping us here in Canada build the music industry locally. That's one example. A second example is uh, we have a, a Hollywood movie star. Now, he's not A grade. I, I doubt if anybody here could name the person, but if you saw him on the screen, you'd probably know him. Now, what's so great about this guy is he's in every virtual big Hollywood picture that comes out. You can see he's in there somewhere in some role, you know, some supporting role. Now, this guy's been around in Canada for a number of years. We brought him in. And his great contribution to us is he's our ambassador for Canada in the entertainment industry, sharing the value of being a Canadian or having Canadian status in terms of the roles that are available in Toronto, in Vancouver, in terms of uh, you know what's in the future for, for people who are uh, film actors, uh, in, also in the uh, theater district here, etc. That's another example. Here's a third. There's a lady, a woman from Nigeria, who has a trucking firm here. Only a few trucks, maybe three or four. She set them up here. It just happened that there was another client of ours from Russia, also a woman who had a trucking firm. And uh, I, I, we got them together in our office talking. And these two ladies uh, decided, well, we're going to work together. We'll merge together our trucking companies. and. Uh, it happened that uh, we had some contacts in the United States that are shipping uh, uh, parcels all over North America, and the two ladies flew down to talk to those people down there to start up an international trucking firm here based out of Toronto. Those are three examples of the kinds of things that uh, immigration helps our economy with. Now, we at PACE do a lot with uh, international investors, investor immigration. We bring people in who are uh, high-level investors, for example, a former uh, head of a stock, uh, stock exchange in, in Egypt or a guy who was uh, head of Moody's overseas who is now in Canada with their families. Those people, and particularly their families, their kids are now in the Canadian schools and growing up to be leaders in the Canadian society, our future leaders and hopefully the people who will uh, put Canada at the front of, economically speaking, at the front of the world economy in the future. Those are some concrete examples Thanks. of the value of immigration. Very good, thank you. Uh, Janet, your firm handles a lot of the temporary foreign worker visas, and it's quite, well, that's probably the one that we all know about. It's been politicized, it's been changed over the years, it became the subject of election campaigns, um, etc. You deal with that one among so many other programs, um, but give us a sense of the changes that you've seen happen recently to it. Maybe describe it quickly for people who don't know what it is, how it's used by companies, and give us your opinion. I know that these panelists have this, this rare opportunity to be speaking directly with the Minister President on really good ideas to improve these programs based on you using them every day. Janet? Is it okay if I start with my opinion? Yes, definitely. <laughs> First of all, I think the temporary foreign worker program is essential for Canada. It really drives our economy. Um, temporary foreign workers keep many businesses across Canada going, and these programs really allow uh, companies to fill skill gaps and to address critical labor needs. They also allow companies um, like in communities such as um, um, I think Janet mentioned in uh, southern Ontario where there's been an escalation of automation and globalization where they're losing manufacturing jobs. 
Um, it, this program allows companies to merge into new areas and to attract foreign talent with um, foreign expertise to allow our country to enter into new industries that we currently don't have. So I think it's a great program. The, I think it's also important to understand that the temporary foreign worker program and most of the, the jobs in that program really go to uh, foreign nationals who have skills that Canadians don't have or the positions are going to foreign nationals who are willing to fill positions that Canadians either find undesirable um, because they're just not the right positions or because they're located in remote communities where uh, Canadians just don't want to relocate to. So I think it's a really important program and I think it's really important that we make it as facilitative as possible. Over uh, during the uh, the term of the ten year term that the Conservatives led the government, they really overhauled um, many aspects of our immigration program, and particularly we saw many changes up to the temporary foreign worker program. Um, specifically, they canceled they they canceled programs that really helped to facilitate the quick entry into, entry into Canada of very high skilled for nationals and this really had a significant impact on our economy and on uh, corporate Canada. Um, one program in particular that they cancelled was called the Accelerated Labour Market Opinion Application Process and I would imagine that there are some people in, in this room today who, who are really <laughs> sad to see that program go and that's because it took a program where uh, which involves testing the labor market, as the minister mentioned earlier, testing the labor market and demonstrating that there's no Canadians to fill the position. Well, this program historically took several months in order to facilitate the issuance of a work permit to a foreign national. With this accelerated program, it, it enabled companies to still test the market, but they were able to get access to foreign workers much faster because they were able to file a simplified application process or simplified application and they had to sign off on a number of attestations showing that they had um, they had um, fulfilled all the requirements of the program, but then they were issued these approvals within two weeks and the, t the minister mentioned becoming more efficient well, this was a very, in my opinion, it was a very efficient program and within two weeks companies were able to get their key high skilled people into Canada so it was very, very beneficial but unfortunately the program was terminated. Another, another change that we've seen with the temporary foreign worker program is that as a result of some alleged misuse of the temporary foreign worker program, the former government introduced um, many changes to make the program really very restrictive and, and to deter companies from accessing temporary foreign workers. They made the program much more onerous and much more and, and more expensive. They um, introduced um, um, significantly more eligibility requirements, requiring companies to really jump through hoops if they wanted to hire temporary foreign workers, and the processing times went from two weeks to 20 or 30 weeks. And also the scrutiny of these applications were um, very, very significant. And that's really the, the situation that we have today. And as a result, companies um, have to go through this very long process. There's a lot of uncertainty. And um, they, they are looking to take their projects elsewhere where there's much more certainty in terms of their getting their foreign skilled people into Canada or into those countries to, to meet those projects. A lot of people here have been around the block a bit. You can see why this is particularly political. So you can't just sort of open the door wide and say, sure, bring in anybody you want. Because that frankly was, uh, became a bit of a problem. And um, it's not that the government just decided to cancel a program by themselves. There were particular issues that they were contending with. So somewhere, somewhere in the middle, they need to do the right somewhere thing. Somewhere in the middle. And yes. so what's your view of the level of protection that government needs to prove to the public that it has for the sake of Canadians and allowing these investments to go forward? Well, I think that the accelerated labor market opinion process was really the right answer because it was really a balance between ensuring that companies were testing the labor market and providing jobs to Canadians first, while at the same time they held companies accountable, ensured that they were being compliant with the program, but they were able to get access to those foreign workers much faster. 
So it was a little bit of both sides, mm -hmm. and and it really did facilitate the um, quick entry of, of foreign nationals to Canada, and also um, as a result, many many companies were able to win contracts and ultimately give many more jobs to Canadians. What we've seen happen recently is because it's such a difficult program now, and just to give you an example, we work with a lot of IT companies. One IT company that we work with, um, they needed to bring a project manager into Canada to work on a very important project. And um, for a variety of reasons, we had to go through the temporary foreign worker program. And the company knew that there was not um, anyone in Canada who had these very specific skill sets that this project manager had. But they went through the process, they tested the labor market, they filed the application, and weeks and weeks later, um, they finally got a decision, and the decision was negative. And they were told that, that, that in the opinion of that particular officer, the company should have been able to find a qualified project manager in Canada. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And we were able to get the decision overturned. But as a result, it left a really bad impression on that company. And they said, we are not going through this again. We are taking our projects south of the border. We're, we're, we're going to the US, we're taking our investments south of the border, and we're taking our jobs south of the border. We need to be working in a system where there is certainty and there's assurance that we're going to be able to get our people into the country when we need them. Andy, when you and I were preparing for today, you were talking about the US system. You spent a lot of your time in the New York office. And we kind of think that we've got a pretty good immigration system in Canada. But you were pointing out some things to me that might be putting a bit of a kibosh on that view as it compares to the U.S. And that 9-11 aside, things have improved markedly for the immigration system in the U.S. Um, give them a 